What's up? What's that? <laughs> Perfect day. You got your top golf hat on. All right, let's go. Well, let's get this thing rolling here. Good to see everyone. Well, let's, before we get to the draft, there's a couple of news items we'd like to talk to you about. Could you guys comment on just the, the last week with Richie and his situation? <coughs> Um, you know, not going to really get into detail. It's just Richie's, he's on the reserve retired uh, list, which is not a part of our 90 man roster. And that's, you know, that's really where we're at. Can you just, as a player, any player, not just Richie, but if, if someone is on the reserve list and they decide that they want to come back to football, what is that process like? They have to request through the commissioner to be reinstated. Um, you know, it's kind of like the Anquan Bolden thing. If you guys remember, he was on the reserve retired list. So, uh, yeah, he would have to be reinstated. <laughs> what was, I mean, he, he, did, he, he said he contacted you and, and, and Sean and, and Terry to talk about his retirement. It, 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 that, that, that's fair. And what do you make of, I mean, just the tweets and the social media stuff that has come out? I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it's really – the time to get into it. It's just let's leave it as is. And, and really, Sean and I'd like to focus on a you know any draft questions you got or the players that, uh, that are here on the on the ninety man. Since but since we're talking about doing Sean, can you at least uh, tell me what your message was to the to this team? I remember late last year, when just been shortly after the regular season, you had discussed about you know there's a lot of holes that need to be mm-hmm. filled here that you guys were no by no means there. Yeah, I think really the, the biggest thing we tried to cover was, uh, other than normal logistics and, and whatnot, the first day was just really the reality of our situation is uh, such that eight, eight of the 12 teams that made the playoffs in 2016 didn't make the playoffs in 2017. And so uh, we have to turn the page from what happened last year and understand that this is a new team. It's a new year, uh, new personalities, and and so we've got our work cut out for us, really, and and we've got a long way to go. That that really hasn't changed. We're excited about, um, you know, the guys that we've added to the roster and and the work that apparently has been put in since the players have uh, left us X amount of months ago. Um, but really, we've got to earn the right, and that starts really today. And for, there's also a new set of, you know, I don't know if you want to say problems or holes or whatever, because you've had some players leave that maybe weren't as expected when you ended last season. And, you know, we'll talk about obviously Richie, uh, Eric Wood, you, you know, you made a trade quarterback. So there's there's a different set of circumstances than when you walked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every year is different in the NFL. That's our league, right? It's yeah. uh, every every team is different. So you really got to start over uh, day one, and that's what we're here to do today. Our players, um, you know, worked extremely hard. It appeared, and in and out of the meeting rooms, and and the coaches were prepared, and the staff was ready to go. Um, you know, all the way up and down the board. So. Um, you know, my hat goes off to the to the team here, and that just is not just the the players and the coaches, but everyone in this building that was ready to go from the first uh, from the first uh, minute that the players walked in the door this morning. Brandon, how often do your draft board set pretty much at this point? And how much wiggle room is there between now and then, and in particular the quarterbacks when you're looking at ranking them? Yeah, I mean, uh, we haven't finalized every position, but we're pretty close. I mean, uh, we, I would say we have, some, we have it down to some clumps. You know, maybe you got, you know, several DBs in the third round. I'm just making this up. But um, that were, okay, if you got into the third round and you got these three corners and they're all close, now anybody like that, we're just kind of going back watching film. If they were all three there and they were the best players on the board, which one would you go first? Which one would you go second? Which one would you go third? So we've got them close to where their final resting place will be, so to speak. But uh, that's kind of what we're doing now. Scouts are here, and we're basically just going around and trying to settle some arguments in the room of how each of us sees guys. But and quarterback holds true to what you're talking about. Quarterback. Yeah, I mean we're 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 pretty close um, there, but um, nothing's finalized at this point. How long is it to get you to bring that quarterback? I'm sorry, what did you say? How important is it to get a franchise quarterback now? you you got to have a franchise quarterback. You, you, That's one of the main jobs uh, of a GM is to 
to find a franchise quarterback. It's quarterback league. I'll say it every single time. You have to have one. How often do you feel that question? What's that? How often do you feel the question? What Probably you until you – until – Yeah, until we – are you draft, but are you drafting a quarterback with the first pick, and, and, oh. and who, who's it going to be? How often do you feel that? Well, when I go home every did, day. Did I hear you say Weg? Did I hear you say Wegmans? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's why you love this fan base is the passion, and um, I get it. I respect it. Uh, some of the conversations, some of the comments. They're, they're not even necessarily asking for my opinion. They're just giving me theirs. I'm sure – I know Sean gets it. Uh, Boyko gets it. and He's a PR guy. Um, everybody gets it. And I like that. People care. That's all you can ask for. Um, and I get the question. It's fair. And until we can stand up here and say um, – it's somebody that we currently have on our roster or somebody who's not on our roster, we're going to get that question, and that's fair. So could you deem this, could you deem this draft a success if you did not come out with a franchise quarterback? Yes. Why? You know, there's a lot of good players in this draft, and that was the big thing of moving from 21 to 12. The natural assumption, I get it, uh, is they're moving up to get a quarterback, yada, yada, yada. Um, no, we, we improved our draft position. That was a – a second round value jump to go from 21 to 12. We were we're excited about where that moves us, you know, on our draft board. The players that we see would be available there. Hey Brandon and Sean, um, you know, given what's happened on your offensive line, you're, you've lost three really good players, uh, two by retirement, and you traded Cordy. Did that what's happened the last two months at that position? Alter any of the thinking as you go into the draft? I mean, I'm guessing in January you weren't thinking you'd have to replace three starting offensive linemen. Um, did that change anything in regards to your draft strategy? Not to our draft strategy, no. I mean, you, there's all sorts of surprises that happen. I can't say that Sean or I had an idea that, you know, those three changes would all happen when we walked off the field in Jacksonville. But um, you're constantly having to adapt and adjust. Um, I kind of categorize it maybe crazy like, okay, we lost that player. He's down. It's like a guy going down for injury. What's our next best avenue? Who's out there? You, you know, you can't help it. And, you know, we're always going to continue to try and fill those roles. We tried to do some same things in the draft. You know, we brought in um, Marshall Newhouse and, and uh, Russell Bodine. Uh, so we did fill a couple of those. And then we got some guys on the roster that we're, we're happy with, and we got the draft. And um, I think I mentioned this before, there will be guys that will come after the draft. Teams will draft players and say, you know what, um, I feel better about this position. I'm going to go with this young guy, and I'm going to let a veteran go. So um, we don't play meaningful football until September, and that's our job is to make sure we have the best 53-man roster uh, after, after the last preseason game. When it comes to a guy like, like Josh Allen specifically, but even players like him, um, when you look at completion percentage, but you compare it to the guys he had around him, how do you weigh that? You know, you, you want to make sure you get it right, but he wasn't at the same level, so necessarily he wasn't thrown to the right talent, things like that. Just kind of how do you weigh that, particularly the numbers and things like that with the talent around him? Yeah, I don't want to get into specifics about each person because I think that's a dangerous road. Um, but to your point, there's a lot that goes into evaluating college quarterbacks. It is a much harder job than evaluating pro quarterbacks. With the systems, the talent level, you know, you got some teams that are all spread. Some, you know, some conferences play great defense. Some, some don't. Um, you got all sorts of things that you have to weigh in there, and those are all part of it. But there's no. Uh, one factor or anything like that, that that's more important necessarily. Last year, Sean spoke often about you know the big picture. It was often about you know building the right way. It was a general thing, not necessarily looking at the record. Are you, do you subscribe to the idea that sometimes perhaps you might have to take a step back in order to, to, to move forward, or is this like a constant? It doesn't seem like it's always a straight linear line up the hill, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, you'd love it for it to be that, but it doesn't always happen that way. I mean, the thing we're trying to do, we're trying to, you know, get better every year. We're trying to, you know, we had nine wins this year. We're trying to get more, but um, it doesn't always happen for various reasons. It's a competitive league. Sean said it earlier. This is a new team. 
We're, we're zero and zero. We haven't had the draft yet. We got nine picks, which uh, I'm excited about. I think he is, or at least hopefully he's still excited after the draft. But um, that's kind of our mindset is just we're always looking to get the right type of fit. You know, nothing's changed from even before I got here to what Sean said. We That's where we're so aligned. And we want talented players, but it's it's got to be a fit for the team. And that's still <coughs> – holds true as we sit here today. Sean, what about your voice when it comes to this defense, which needs a lot of, <coughs> a lot of work and a lot of improvement? How, how much is that being heard, or, or at least you're, you're voicing it in these pre-draft meetings about the need to fix a lot of those defenses? Well, I think we've added some, some players along the defensive side of the ball, um, star, uh, to name one. And, and then the other guys we've added as well. I mean, you look at – uh, our cornerback situation, what it was versus what it is now, uh, what it was before free agency versus what it is now, even uh, before Vontae and everything. So, you know, we've added some pieces. We've certainly lost some pieces too. That's that's natural in this league, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, Brandon and his staff have done a really good job of staying on top of who's available out there. We added Tenny just, you know, just today or, or the end of the weekend uh, last week. And, <clears throat> um, you know, we're always looking to improve our roster every way we can, and, and that's the great part about Brandon. He's, he knows it's not where it needs to be. He knows he's always trying to find a way to improve it, he and his staff, and I think they've done a phenomenal job to this point. Um, you know, our defensive staff, I really like the work that they put in this offseason, and, and also the offensive staff and special teams. The coaches have been hard at work uh, finding out and building on what worked and what didn't work, and then trying to improve what we're doing systematically and schematically as well. So are you satisfied that free agency has addressed enough of those needs that I, I'm not saying you're not going to draft defensive players, but that it's less of a priority in your mind? Well, I don't, I don't think we look at it that way. I think we look at it as just adding players that can help our football team in, in different ways. And, and certain guys will hold different roles. And those roles will become defined as we move forward at the right time. Right now, it's about these guys competing and competing at a high level with one another. Uh, it's not about other teams. It's about us getting better in our building every day. And the work that our players, our coaching staff, our strength staff, our medical staff, um, our equipment staff, the work that these guys, those guys have put in to prepare ourselves for today um, again, I can't say how much I appreciate it, how, how much we appreciate it, and uh, it's going to position us to put the work in moving forward at the same time. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, this is a process, as you've heard me say before. We started a year ago or just over a year ago, and you saw us build a team. We're back in the market of building the team again, and certainly, Vic, we want to continue to add talent. Um, so I'm not one that's going to turn down good football players. Are you satisfied with, uh, with the Zay's up, the Zay Jones situation? I'm sure you've talked to him. Just to get back. Uh, are you satisfied with what that says right now? Actually, both of you can answer that. Yeah, we did, have a com we did have some communication with Zay when we got back. And, and uh, to this point, we are satisfied with, with where that is. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest thing right now is where we go moving forward and, and how we handle our business moving forward. Um, you know, it, listen, you know, people, people go through situations, and uh, like I said before, I was disappointed. Um, the biggest thing was we were able to talk about it and, and come to a point where we all agree we need to move forward, and, and I'm excited about the future for Zay. How much do you, uh, Brandon, how much do you, you and your staff do, like, um, mock draft exercises, essentially, you know, yep. different scenarios that you run through? Yeah, we, uh, we do do that, and what we'll try to do, that'll probably be Monday, uh, before the draft next week, we'll we'll sit there and just go through it, and that'll be each of them's job to throw up scenarios that are legit, are real, and we'll debate them in the room. How you, how, you know which way you go, and we'll actually do some actual mocks. We'll I'll assign some guys. Hey, you're the you know you're the Browns, you're the Giants, you're the Jets. You know down the line, <laughs> who would you choose based on their needs and you know what you're hearing out there as the, the chatter, so to speak, just to basically give yourself those scenarios. And we'll do that through the first couple rounds, you know, so 12, 22, 53, 56. And you said you're uh, close on the quarterback. Can you elaborate 
that mean you're closer to the one separating one guy out? <clears throat> no, I think just ordering them. Like, like when I say close, I'm saying ordering them how we would select them if all of them were there. You know, if, if we were the Cl Cleveland Browns at one, what the order would be. Coach, Larry McDermott, just what attracted you to make him an addition, number one, and then can you build a help for Joe and then you want to join us coming in today? Yeah, you know, Jeremy, uh, we were able to add Jeremy over the weekend. Uh, he came in and worked out uh, Friday, I believe it was, uh, Thursday or Friday, Thursday maybe. Okay. And uh, uh, so did a good job, and, and we were able to add him. And, you know, he's a guy that I've gone up against in terms of coaching against him. I know what he brought to the table um, from a wide receiver position. He's a veteran player, also had some returnability. So I thought it was a, uh, a good signing for us. Um, and again, my hat goes off to Brandon and his staff, identifying Jeremy out there. And then Kelvin, yeah, he came in and, and uh, looks like he's ready to go. Um, you know, like the rest of our offensive offensive players, uh, you know, getting familiar with the new scheme, the new system, and and so that that was excited. Um, that was good to see today as as we move forward as an offense too. <coughs> I'm sorry. Not quite 100 percent, but he's working like some of the other players. We do have some guys that are still working rehabbing. Uh, Zay being one of them. And for Brandon specifically, Kelvin, um, what sort of discussions have there been as far as new contract with him? Well, you know, we really don't get into discussions or anything like that. Right now, we're just you know happy he's here and showed up and and was out there working with everybody else. So that's really where it's at. The focus right now is on the draft. Brandon, what's the process for actually making a trade on draft day? Do you have certain teams on um, speed dial? Is it a text message, phone call to other GMs? What would you actually do to trade up? Um, it, it varies. You know, if if I have a really good relationship with the GM or somebody high up there, I may text or call them directly. If Sean does or if Joe Shane or, you know, Terrence Gray, one of the guys that's – um, done a lot of the work and the leadership in the room, you know, if he's really, hey, check with him, tell him we're interested in this or see if they're interested in that. That's generally how it would start. And then if it if it leads to, hey, they are, there is an interest, then I would get on with the GM. All right, you go through, Eric Brennan, this is your first draft, is it? Are there anxious <coughs> moments? It's like I, I have this vision of like a boxer, you know, he's inching towards the fight day. And, uh, I don't know if you lost sleep, if you, uh, I'm sure you played a million different yeah. scenarios in your head, and also takes one trade or something to blow the whole thing, it's no reason anyway. But. Yeah, no, you're spot on. Uh, you think about it all the time, even when you don't want to think about it, um, because we're competitors, and you know, you want to win every pick, you know what I mean? You want to feel like, man, we, we got to steal in the first round, we got to, you, you know, that's, that's natural. Can't say it always happens that way, but um, yeah, there's different things that have been in my head. I'm sure he has uh, probably the same thing in his head. Guys that he's looked at, they go, "Man, that guy would be a great fit for us." And, he's and not yeah, yeah. You know, we, you know, in your situation, you're this is your first time, really. Yeah. As, 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 as the head guy, no, no, you're right, spot on. That's that's very accurate. Um, until it gets here, it's uh, you're right. All you can do is be anxious, do the work. Uh, I feel good about the work, and that if you do the work, generally it should fall in place. How much fun is that for you, though? Like, it, you know, I think there's a million armchair people out there that say, man, if I was running that draft, here's what I would do. Would yeah. you actually get, get to be that guy to do that? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm a competitor. I, I love it. I love my job. I love everything about it. This is huge. This is where my staff and I show that we've done the work and we're competent people. And... Um, our job, my job at the end of the day is to give this guy the resources to lead the team and his coaches to produce on the field. And if I do my job, it helps him do his. If I, if I don't, that's what I lose sleep. I feel like I let him down. Sean, knowing how critical continuity is to, the, uh, to an offensive line, just given a situation where there is a lot of people, how, how are you at this stage of the offseason sort of plotting for that? Conversations you've had with Brian, uh, with, with Juan, and, and the approach, knowing that it's a very different set of circumstances. Than yeah, I mean, there's, Vic, there is something to be said for continuity. I, ju I just know, and you've been around this league a long time, that's hard to say every year at every position. Uh, it just so happens we had some, we've had some 
guys come and go at the offensive line position, to name one. Uh, that said, I'm you know you mentioned one of them, Ryan Groy. Um, the leadership he has shown, uh, and we haven't been together you know very long now. It's been a day, but even previous to today, the leadership he's shown, the leadership Jordan Mills has shown. Um, and Deion Dawkins, even for a young guy, these guys are stepping up, and that's what you want to see. They they understand uh, what's at stake. They understand there's an opportunity as well for them to step up and increase their leadership influence. And I've been nothing but impressed with the way they've handled things. Brandon, how do you take into account I mean, just the wild speculation and how it changes from week to week, maybe even day to day? One day you're trading with the Giants, it's a lock. Next day you're trading in, in the sixth spot. I mean, one day you're picking this guy, like one guy that will do you have you paid attention at all to some of the speculation, the wild speculation that's been out there? And what do you make of it? Yeah, I mean that's a fair question, John, but uh, you can't. I mean there's so much chatter out there. If if you pay attention to it, the last thing I want to do is be swayed by anything from the outside. And um, I, again I get it, it's a fair question, but no, I don't listen to it. Brandon, uh, in terms of Finding a middle linebacker in this particular class, have you found it? It might not be a great draft for that specific position. You have that need, it looks like, on your roster. Yeah. Um, as you look at the draft class, is that going to be a tough one to fill, maybe? You know, I don't know. I mean, um, that's a tough question without giving up competitively uh, what I think of that position group in the draft. But um, we do understand, we do realize that Preston was our starter all year and is not here and you know uh, I get it you know you'd love to come out of here with a guy you felt good with that could do that but even if we don't I mentioned it earlier we don't play meaningful football until September we'll we'll, we'll find an answer Graham, how much sleep do you lose when you hear people say this will be the Bills most important draft since they took Jim Kelly <laughs> I hadn't heard that till you just said it but <laughs> 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 you made it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's on the record, right? Uh, you made that question. So, <laughs> thanks. I won't be sleeping for the next 10 days, Jerry. Uh, no, I mean, listen, I, every draft, I, I take this as no different. I get it. I really do. But we're at 12, and I don't know what's going to be there at 12. I don't know what quarterback will be there. I don't know if we're going up or going down. And that's 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 really how it is as I sit here. You. I know everybody, as soon as we're trading up, first of all, I, I said it before, even if I wanted to trade up right now, even if I said, I know the guy I want to get and I need to get to this spot, it takes a partner to do it and be willing to move out. And um, so, again, I think I'll lose sleep every year going into the draft because you're always going to have holes. You're always going to want to make your roster more competitive and better. And that's the thing. We want to find the best football players that we can to help us in 2018 and beyond, and that's that's the vision. When it comes to draft day, your board set, you can probably know X amount of guys that you would be willing to move up for. How tight do you keep the circle in terms of people who know how you actually feel about the quarterback? I mean, do you tell friends? Do you tell your wife? I mean, or is it real? Like, how tight is that circle? Um, yeah, it doesn't come. It doesn't leave this building. So no, my wife doesn't know. Uh, but no, it's it's very tight. Um, of and listen, I'm not talking about guys in the second round either, or the third round, or whoever of any position. Like I just, I think it's it's bad form. I think you you you're competitively hurting yourself. Anything that you could do to competitively hurt yourself is is bad. So. Uh, we keep it pretty close to the vest, what we're doing. Sean, what, what, was, we call? <laughs> Sean, what, was the, what was the thing that you learned maybe the most? What was the most significant thing you learned from last year and your first year as a head coach going into draft, going into this season? In terms of the draft? or yeah, in terms of the draft. Well, you know, I, I just think that, um, you know, we learned a lot last year. We I thought we came out with, um, you know, some good players. And... I don't know if it's as much the biggest thing I learned, but probably the biggest thing that was uh, affirmed or verified for me was, um, you know, that you want to find guys that um, are good off the field uh, and on the field. And, and I think that's, you know, there's a lot of good players out there that, 
you know, don't have um, maybe some, you know, their act together off the field and, and you're tempted to take those players. And, um, you know, so, and, you know, so I was reminded of how important that is um, as we went through our process last year. Brandon, have you met five of these with all the quarterbacks on your radar and how have those meetings shifted maybe things on your board? Um, it's part of the process. Um, yes, we, we have met with them, with them all. Um, at this point, we know them, we know them pretty well. And, and as I was alluding to back in senior bowl and combine that that was a big part of the process. And, you know, all I really would say is that they're all great young men and there's a reason they're all being talked about. When did the conversations begin about trading? Is it really something as early as combine or owners meetings, or really is that something that just doesn't start happening maybe till the week of, or even maybe 24 hours before the draft? You know, it happens all over the place. I would say most of it happens close to the draft, but you know, the Colts and Jets worked something out uh, weeks ago. And so I think that, yeah, that was before the owners meetings. I would say that doesn't happen very often, but it did. Um, most of it, I would say, happens closer. Brent, how much, uh, I guess, you know, alluding to Jerry's question, how much pressure is there given that you don't always have six picks in the first three rounds? You're not always looking at a quarterback class like this one. So how much does that kind of add to the pressure of finding that guy in this draft? You know, um, I don't really, again, Bucky said it earlier, it's my first one going through it. so. I can't compare it to another year as, as the GM, um, but I think I'll feel this way in a year from now. You know, no matter what we're after or what our so-called needs are, um, I just feel like the competitive nature. You want to get it right. I know the work's been done by our whole staff, and that's coaches included. A lot of these coaches have gone on the road that we've identified as guys, hey, go find out a little bit more about this guy. How does he learn best? Does he fit what you do? Can he learn your our system? And and you think he's going to fit in your position meeting room? Again, I think we've now, we're, we've almost finished all those, which helps. But um, it's a total team effort. And Sean and I aren't sitting up here pointing out all the answers. We don't get to the answers without all that work. And um, I think it'll be. We're competitors, and I think I'll be anxious every year until draft day. But, again, we do our job, do it right. It should unfold the way we want. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you.